All right, this is Charlie Wills here with Greg Russo. We're going to talk a little about, uh, about their small business, and uh, we're going to have Greg start the introductions here about who he is, his background, a little bit about you know where he came from, and uh, we'll get to know Greg a little bit before we talk about his business. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so, obviously, uh, Charlie mentioned my name, Greg Russo. I, I do business development for a company called um, Break Free Solutions. So we're an IT professional services um, provider. Uh, company and we um, we help typically larger enterprises uh, with the transformation that's going on around um, cloud and automation and uh, containers and, and, and DevOps and uh, you know accelerating towards digital right so kind of a lot of what we're actually all experiencing right now is that need for digital and that craving for the ability to um, still interact in the same ways we did before with whatever whether that be you know, each other or buying groceries and having things ordered and shipped to our door or, um, you know, work and continue to, to provide uh, um, value to our company so that we're a valuable employee. So that's what we do as a company um, is we really help uh, enterprise IT kind of take on that transformation. And, and um, it's not really even a transformation. It's more of an expansion of their current operating model. It's, it's offering new and, uh, and maintaining and improving on the old. Um, so in my background uh, has always really been, in, in the professional world, always been business development, sales types roles, uh, you know, started off in inside sales, um, working for an insurance company, moved out into the broker world. So I was a uh, health insurance broker for a um, <clears throat> brokerage, uh, uh, Midwest-based, but national brokerage. Um, and then moved into this role about three years ago now. So this is what I've been doing for, for three years or so. Cool, man. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that uh, dive in a little bit deeper about, you know, what you, what you're doing in your day to day. Um, I'm asking everybody, what are they, what are they seeing as adjustments uh, or adaptations, uh, whether it's in the short term or possibly even into the long term that are in your business and, and what do you think it'll mean to your clients? Yeah, I mean, that's on everyone's mind right now. I think there's really two ways to think about how we are adjusting. There's our deliverables, right? So our services that we provide. So the, the folks in our team that go to our clients and, and bill an hourly rate and, um, you know, provide the services that we promise and deliver. Um, <clears throat> and then there's the business development side, which is my side, obviously. And, and that means interacting with either net new or new or um, folks maybe keeping uh, uh, conversations warm, keeping relationships open um, that we have already talked to, but maybe aren't yet a client. Um, <clears throat> and so there's really two ways that we've adapted. The first one, the, the, the former of what I just mentioned is relatively easy. It, it just depends on our clients. Um, but by and large, um, they're, they're very happy, in fact, to have the continued help during this stressful time, right, which is one less thing for them to, to manage and stress about when we're available to work 100% remote. Um, I'd say probably, uh, I'm going to guess over half, but maybe not quite two thirds of our uh, service delivery teams uh, already work remote. The more the senior resources that are on site, right? The 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 head, the the most senior resources, the most the highest you know levels w within our company, but that are providing the the leadership aspect um, of our services in our clients. They've always really been on site for the most part, but okay. for them to switch remote, not terribly hard, right? I mean, it, because they've maybe developed already relationships with their uh, the people that they're working with, their stakeholders, product owners, right? The types of folks that they've already you interact with. Now, on our side, on my side of the fence, which includes the leadership team, right? So I don't, I don't do sales. We, I develop business, right? So our, our leadership team and myself, we go and we um, discuss what our services would be and how to buy them and, um, and, and the like. So our team, though, our, our leadership team has had to flex a little bit in being able to um, still interact with folks. But you know, what it's taken is just being willing to reach out and say, hey, do you guys want to talk about what's going on over a virtual happy hour or a lunch meeting? You know, do you want to fire up the old video conference? And, um, you know, and maybe maybe you don't even want to talk about this. That's fine. We're around. Um, we, you know, you should, you should see us as a trusted resource and not as someone who's trying to um, pummel you with uh, how we can help you now during this stressful time. Um, because, 
really, we, uh, I think we're trying to take the approach that um, we work with a lot of very smart people who are also very capable and very um, able to adapt with, to what their businesses are going through and that we are just a trusted resource along the way, right? And that they can bounce ideas off of us, right? And they can know what we are able to provide. And, you know, maybe in some cases, even what they're going through and how they're adapting will accelerate their journey towards actually talking with us about mm. what we do. So we think of it kind of as an exciting time, even though it's really sad, right? It's not, we're not looking as our, uh, you know, as the, at the pandemic as positive, but what we can take out of it is, hey, you know, this need for what um, the world is, is craving, which is that digital experience is greater than ever. Mm. That's awesome. So I think you hit a really good point is that it's not necessarily your you're going to, you know, just be slaying the sales numbers, you know, this next 30 right. or 60 days, but what an impactful way to just reach out and say, how are you? What are your needs? You know, is there anything I can do to assist during this time? Because, you know, you yeah. may have challenges, right? So yeah. um, I think that's powerful, man, because right now that's probably what our clients need more than anything. It's just, they're cycling through all the levels as well, right? Like probably it was denial and now it's, sadness yep. and depression a little bit and you know like people are going through all these different cycles and yep. you know you got to be able to be there for them during that time well, and, and and even in addition to uh you know I'll, I'll say there's three people that i've talked to in the last week and a half that have what what could only be described as unbelievably coincidentally unique circ circumstances right one of them was let go from his job because his position was um, was eliminated before the pandemic. So like, but days before the big shutdown, days. So, he, you know, here's this guy who has been working in enterprise IT for 30 plus years. First time he's ever been let go because of position was removed. He, you know, he, he had a very good approach. He's not, you know, we talked at length and he's in a great position mentally because he was kind of already fed up with a little bit of the executive leadership he was working under. And so, it was kind of a mutual, yeah, you can, if you eliminate my position, I'm out, that's fine. So, but think about that, right? I mean, to go from completely secure life, you know, cabin in the north woods of Wisconsin, talked about it all the time, you know, kids in college and one's graduate, you know, everything's great to, I don't have a job, I can't even leave my house, I've never put together a resume, because this has never happened to me before, right? And then, and two other people, both took new jobs, Arguably, one one for sure was arguably better. The other was probably more lateral and just like a, the time was right for her to to move on, you know. But they they haven't even been able to go to the office. They had to have laptops and credentials and everything shipped to them, right? They've never met their physical teams that they're going to be working with. So think about those circumstances, right? Sometimes it's just like, hey, let's talk, let's hang out. You know, what's going on? Wow, tell me your story. People want to get that off their chest and yeah. you know that's that's an interesting story right and and um a lot of the times what can develop from just talking about it from their perspective is is the realization of how unique their scenario is yeah. and maybe that there's going to be some things that they're going to have to do quickly right once they actually do get outside so yeah anyway. yeah i think that's a uh, um i talked to adam albrick who you know um mm -hmm. Uh, about something very similar he called it the host mentality like you're going to be hosting right now you're hosting instead of hosting dinner parties and happy hours and coffees you're hosting virtuals of all of that and yep. the host is the one that asks the question the one who gets gritty the one who you know makes sure that the conversations don't stop so yep um yep. i thought that was really that's that's really powerful um on a on a personal level um for you know managing uh we were talking before we started recording like managing just basic life right like working out mm -hmm. groceries yep. child care how how has that changed for you guys you know what helps you keep uh, that focus and that rhythm so that you're you're keeping the balance yeah for sure uh, that's uh th those are probably pr that's priorities number one you know our mm -hmm. child is obviously priority number one um we have one child who's just about toddler age and uh you know that flex was stressful right i think um i'm lucky lucky enough to work for a company that 
cares for the, your family just as much as, as you do, I'd say. You know, I can say that pretty confidently in that when I've talked to my leadership team, who all, by the way, have kids, you know, um, you know, two of the leaders have two and one has two and one on the way, right? So all different age ranges all the way up through high school. Yeah. And so, you know, they all have their kids at home too. They're, they're trying to figure this out and, and totally understanding. And um, so that, you know, that's, that's a ca important caveat, right? Because if you work for someone who maybe doesn't have that perspective, then you're going to, there's going to be, uh, you know, whenever there's different perspectives looking at a scenario or a problem or however you want to describe it, there's going to be issues. But in our case, we're all on the same page. It's almost even unspoken, right? Take care of your kid first, then, you know, and do whatever you can on the work side. So, you know, the first week, was I productive? No, I don't think so. You know, no, maybe, I but I don't remember. I barely remember, right? It was a blur. <laughs> and, you know, we're trying to figure out like how, so my wife and I, we have a very good rhythm about exercise, both collegiate athletes. We, it's a really ingrained part of our lives, you know? So between kid and exercise, right? And just kind of daily routines, how are we going to keep that? Well, you know, the first thing to do, I, I think, it, it, this you just, now we're just completely getting into opinion, but, um, you know, don't sweat it. You're not going to be perfect at it, but just, just make an effort to do what you normally do, right? It's, yeah. If it's if it's 15 minute workout one day because you can only get 15, squeeze in 15 minutes, well then just do that, right? That's fine. You know, if, if you got to work out with your kid, right? And you're doing thrusters in your living room, throwing your kid up over your head, that's fine. You know, like don't, don't be hard on yourself. You know, I think that's one thing that my wife and I both have and and you know maybe that's a, a athlete thing maybe it's a badger athlete thing um, yeah. but it's it's that mentality of like well you know how how can i resolve this issue not well this is hard and it's harder and i'm going to think about how challenging it is instead thinking about hey you know what's the new solution how can we get to that new solution right and how can i work to continue to improve that new solution so you know in the in the first week it was yeah couple workouts maybe you know if I don't even remember kind of thing but now it's all right well we've got basically a little mini gym set up in our garage and I've given up my car space in the garage who cares right and I park in the road or on the in the driveway or something like that and and now we've got a little dedicated space got some play stuff in there for the kid right some nice little daycare area for me to hang out with him and, you know mix things up and so you know just focus on the solution and focusing on how do I get back to because you know those first week that first week or two when we were all kind of cringing and everyone was kind of like bunched up and you know everyone's necks were tight and and not sleeping very well and wondering what was going to happen the next day uh, you know once that kind of comes comes about right now you've got some solutions in place that you can kind of lean back on and start a new routine and new rhythm yeah I and and that's the whole point here is everybody to share their opinion on you know where they're at is um, I, I've, I've said this multiple times and I, I think it's because we are athletes at the level that we were competing, you know, uh, whether it's, you know, our connection at the UW, but I just think our coaches, right. They threw false hard situations at us, right. To make sure that we were stressed out, to make sure that we were thinking, getting used to these situations that were not normal, right. Like that, that's what happens when, you're good. I mean, a good coach is the one that constantly throws stuff at you so that you're challenged and so that you're stressed because when your body gets used to that stress, then when it actually happens in the real scenario, how you're, you're usually cool as a cucumber, right? Cause you, yep. you're so used to so much, uh, so many, so many stimuli to get you to that spot that That's right. it doesn't phase you. So, yeah. um, I've heard that from a lot of my friends that I can tell which ones were athletes and I can tell which ones weren't. And yeah, I don't mean that in a judgmental way. You can yep. just tell from a background. Yep. That I call it the yep. knuckle down. You know, that yep. first week, like you said, yep. that first week sucked. I was like, what is happening? You know, like I wasn't getting my workouts. I, I had no rhythm. I couldn't figure out like how to be here to help it with my wife and I didn't know how to help with my team and you know were we going to survive and you know after I had that moment of like what is happening I, I finally was like wait a second boom knuckles down I'm going to sit here I'm going to go up to my office and I'm going to think about this and then I was like all right worst case scenario with cash in a business worst case scenario losing business worst case scenario 
all these things, right? For 90 days. And then where are we personally with money? And what do you know, did we do the right thing? Yes, we did. Okay. Whew. Let's go. All right. We're good. Yep. Right. Like yep. the freak out moments over, you know, I probably had too many of those in that first week, but, um, but <laughs> right, it's okay. so, you know, but I think, I think the important part there is the resilience that you just talked about, right. Is um, being resilient enough to just move on and, yeah. you know, understand your scenario. Uh, you know, I think that's a big, you know, there's it's whether it's athletes or in my case, obviously I know a lot of veterans that when you, you know, when you have trained in, you know, in military training to, to, whatever it is, whether it's basic training or if you're going to go overseas, right? Maybe you're going to go do a deployment and, um, you know, you're going to prepare for all the worst scenarios. And almost always the first thing you do is assess, right? And so that's what you finally ultimately did was you, 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 even if you do panic, right? If you can bring yourself back to being able to assess and understand your surroundings and adapt, you will. We're humans. I mean, that's what we're meant for, right? There's a, there's a, term for it it's called homeostasis right how do i how do i get back to um normal average right that's the homeostasis is the whole concept behind why our temperatures stay right around 98 degrees right it's because our body is literally able to physically adapt to almost any stressor or scenario over time right, right. if i do it enough times so right yeah oh that's great man um so what uh so what, what little takeaways, what, what things have you thought about through this whole thing? Like what things have you felt like you're taking away um, in a positive way and that you're trying to share with others during this time? Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of the main things I think about is the time that we all probably have now. I don't necessarily feel that. Um, I have a ton of extra time. I take care of a toddler and, and work full time technically still. Um, but you know, the idea that, you know, when my wife comes home, so my wife is a uh, essential employee. She's out in the community caring for her, um, her clients. Um, and so, you know, when she comes home, the idea that I've got a ton of things going on, right? Whether it's going to be, I'm going to get to the gym or I'm gonna, I've am gonna i got to pick up kids from daycare or we're going to go meet our friends or we're going to go see grandma and grandpa or we're going to go do this activity tonight. Well, we're not doing that right now. So how do you fill up your time? Right. And, you know, I, my president this week of my company said, Hey, I, I went and got my, my old guitars out. I haven't played guitar in years. He's like, I used to be good at it and I liked it. And I just kind of put away when I started having kids and never got them back out kind of thing. You know, why not? It's, it's a great time to revisit some stuff, you know, so that's, that's maybe more socially and personally, like what are you interested in and what can you take an interest in that you maybe have some time to do? Uh, you know, a lot of people get all excited about Netflix and Hulu and all the stuff you can watch. Sure. You know, if that's your preference and that's what you want to do, go ahead. You know, enjoy a bunch of maybe there's there's a ton of documentaries out there. You can learn a ton of new stuff about a specific topic if you want. Um, you know, but and then on in, in the work side, what am I taking away? Well, when I do have time to go sit in my office and work for four, six, eight hours, um, <clears throat> a couple of days a week, I really get like long stretches is, hey, I, I probably have a little bit extra time here, right? So how can I go back and, and do some of the stuff that I don't have time for all the time, right? right? Everyone's right. calendars are busy. I get it. I, in fact, I would say that's, the, that's what I hear 95% of the time in my job. When I reach out to folks and I say, hey, would you want to connect and, and talk to me a little bit about this digital experience and what we're doing for, as a company and what services we have um, and what's going on with you, the answer is almost always, well, I mean, you should see my calendar. It, there's no free spots, right? Well, guess what? There's definitely free spots now. If, and if there's not, you're lying to yourself, right? And so, you know, and, and so I'm not taking that message to the folks that I'm reaching out to. If they want to and they know there's time, I, I'm, I'm still reaching out to them, but I'm not reminding them that I know you're not busy now, right? That's, that would be pretty rude. Um, but what I'm trying to do is take that on myself and say, I know I'm not as busy during a long stretch of, of work in doing my due diligence on my business development activities. So what can I do? Well, I can revisit all of the companies maybe that I haven't talked to in a certain period of time, right? I can go revisit, um, you know, data collections and websites that 
that provide me with information on companies that maybe I do need to reach out to. I can read the news on some of the clients and companies that I'm working with, right? Because some of them are publicly traded, they're large. Whatever it is of your business, right? There's always things that are lowest on the totem pole or or in, in my world, we call it a backlog. Go attack them. Don't just let them just keep shifting, right? Don't do your top thir- you know, 30% and leave that bottom 60, whatever, 70% for the next week like you always do. Yep. Get through 100% of your stuff, right? And if you actually get to that point, which I would be impressed if anyone really felt like they did so much that they were done working, right? And, and literally could only just take on things as they come to them, right? Well, then you need to find yourself some more work in your company and you're not, you're not you got to provide yourself some you got to provide your company or your job or your team more value than that. Right. And, right. and so, I mean, the odds are low that you, anyone would ever be finished. Right. But just go and really attack that backlog um, with, with some good energy, especially, you know, if you're able to, to really have that resilient mindset, then you should be feeling a little bit better right now. Right. And if you're not, you should talk, talk to someone, talk to your friends, talk to your colleagues, Talk to your bosses, right? And tell them, hey, I'm not feeling very great about my situation right now. But, but if you are, and, and it's like you and me and Charlie and I, we just talked about this, then, you know, go out there and with some vigor, go get a bunch of work done, right? I mean, go find some things, some new things even maybe that your role could provide to your company, yourself, your team right. that you didn't even know about, right? So there's lots of um, time now. So use it wisely and, and be aggressive, you know, and, and maybe we'll come out of this thing very positively, right? Maybe we'll come out of this thing with more than we ever thought we could have, um, even though it feels like a sad time and, and like we're all kind of bunched up and huddled up. Yeah, I'm with you on the, um, I'm with you. Hey, if you want to choose and Netflix your life away, go for it, man. Um, but I'm with you. Like, I'm like, where are the gaps in this market, right? Even for my own business, I got to do CE. It's not due till December, but... I got all this time right now. Why don't I just knock it out? It's only six classes. They're all online. Yeah. Take the online quizzes and I'm done. I got now you're free. Seat. And let's say in the fall when you would be normally doing that, you're free, right? I'm free. And guess what I'm going to knuckle down on? There's, a, there's gaps in the appraisal world. Uh, in our market, there is a shortage of like 40%. They need 40% more people appraising properties for sale. There's a shortage. Well. How hard is that right now for me to go online and literally do all this stuff online? Most of it's what I do already anyways. And I got a couple of buddies that are appraisers. So they're going to walk me through it. And then I'm going to do it on the side. I'm going to start taking Friday afternoons and do, you know, two or three appraisals. That's what I just Friday. talked about, right? Is now you've found yourself some more value to your team and your company right. and your business than just getting your work done, right? And checking right. off the boxes that are given to you. Right. Right. Go out and find some boxes that, that need to be checked. Go out yeah. and find some boxes that even if you check them and they're not good, well, guess what? Now you know. Yeah. You know? Right. It's not right. wasted time, right? It's never wasted time to go do something that you either learn or grow, right? That's the, the mentality. You yeah. know, I either know more now than I did then because I'm not doing that and it wasn't valuable to me because I learned it and it didn't help us at all. Or hey, I've got this new niche. Right. And I've got this new ability to offer my clients more value. Right. Or I've got yeah. this new way for our business to make money and I can hire more people and provide back to our, my community even a better way. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's created all sorts of things for me. Like I've, I felt like even more compelled, like I'm going to start next, uh, next week hosting Thursday happy hours, just like we were doing at, at hotel red, not even, you know, a month ago. Yeah. And now I'm going to do them. I'm actually going to go to my office. So it's quiet. I don't have kids screaming and nobody's at my office. So I'm going to go to my office and open a bottle of bourbon and we're all just going to sit there and, you know, everybody grab their favorite cocktail and we're going to, we're going to whoop it up, right? Do it every Thursday and just rotate the groups. You know, I just told my team, like, we have to think different, right? Most of our job was prospecting and meeting people. Well, doesn't mean you can't in some way, right? So um, this whole thing. I would encourage you, I would encourage you even though to go a step further and say, hey, look, you know, with your kids. I've actually had a great experience having my little guy pop in and say hi to folks that I'm having virtual meetings with, right? Because, Hey, look, we're, we're all at home. You get it. And, and you should share that and don't be, you know, don't be worried about it. I know it's distracting for you, but I would just encourage you that 
it's okay. We're all, we, I mean, I'd love to see your kids. I love kids. So yeah. that's, that's me. Right. And maybe not everyone's like me, but, um, you know, don't be, don't be worried about that too much, man. Like, I think that that would also break down a barrier. You know, I think my, my CTO, Brad, whom I don't know if I've introduced you to him yet, um, but he's no. a Middleton guy and, um, you know, he's from Dodgeville. So he's a, just a local guy. He was on the UW rugby clean team when I was on the football team. That's how we met 10 plus years ago now. And, um, you know, he said it best. He's like, if you don't have your, your video on, on a conference call these days, what are you like? What, what's going on? What are you doing? Why? <laughs> what does it matter? What, I mean, are you, you know, if, if you look like a slob, well, that's you maybe, you know, I don't know. Who cares though? It doesn't bother me. If you, you know, I, I think that that perception needs to, to kind of get broken down a little bit. That's a, that's definitely another takeaway I've had from the last three weeks of accelerated video calls, right? Is, Hey, we, you know, work is ingrained into life a little bit more than it used to be. And that's okay. And we're all doing that. And you shouldn't be afraid to let your kids scream when you're on a call for a second, right? Turn around, calm them down, or they calm you down or whatever, or your dog barks at the mailman. You know, you know, it's all part of the experience now, especially, but even going forward, right after this, what's it matter if I, you know, if I didn't put on my best, you know, button down and whatever that day, you know, if I'm having a meeting, it doesn't matter. I'm still the same person. Right. I think, I think of it the same way as, you know, there was maybe 10 years ago, I'm going to say there was this bit, maybe it's a little longer than that now about tattoos in the workplace. It was like, it was like in the news, it seemed every week for like a year. Right. And what, I mean, in my personal opinion, and I have tattoos, so I will say that caveat, what on God's earth does that have anything to do with someone's ability or their your perception of them to be able to do something for you. Nothing. It shouldn't have any, any change, right? It's literally just a physical thing. I could wear different shirts that make me look a little bit unique, right? And that shouldn't change your perception of how I am and, and my ability, you know? So I think that I would just encourage you when you said, hey, let's have some happy hours and you're going to do it in a quiet place, you know? Maybe a little of the chaos sometimes is okay. It's not a big deal. Yeah, you know, we can we can if we see your chaos, then you can see mine, and that barrier is broken down, and we're a little closer than we used to be. Then, then cool, you know. Yeah, no, and I've had my kids on a couple actually. One happy hour, my little girl, my my little buddy stays out of here, but my uh, one and a half year old tends to break into she's the curious. Office. Yeah, yeah, super yeah. curious, and then she'll come yeah. on and she'll be like, "Hi, hi," yep. she repeats yep. "hi" like eight hundred times. So, yep. Um, so that part, no, it's actually pretty great. I mean, I love having them to be able to come in here and know that I'm here. You know, like like you said, it's the yeah. little moments. Like, I take a break at lunch, which I don't think I've had lunch with these guys in oh, years. Oh, yeah, I bet. Right? Um, yep. So, you know, I, I was having lunch just yesterday. This happened. Um, we're sitting there, and the mailman came. And I usually don't care about the mailman. I mean, he comes in, he throws the mail down, he leaves. And my little guy just start recently, and I don't know, I've never seen this, but he – he, uh, we have a mail slot in the front of the house, you know, not many people, it's usually a mailbox somewhere. Well, we have a slot, yep. so you have to open yep. it. And when it opens, you can see outside, you know, my little guy like sticks his head and he goes, hi, thank you for the mail. All right. Have a good day. Bye. That's great. You know, like, yeah, I love it. Yeah. And it's like, it reminded me that like, that is, it's just as exciting to get mail as it is to like say hello and celebrate someone who's doing their job to help you and everything else. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm so thankful for the littlest things. So yep. it's yeah, great. it's crazy. Super crazy. It's great cool. to be, I mean, you know, it's, to me, it's a great, it's really hard. Don't get me wrong. I'm not here saying that childcare is easy, but it's really great to just be so involved in, in my guy's life for this yeah. much, you know, time. Yep. I, I remember talking, this was before the pandemic. Um, I remember talking with my father-in-law who said that, um, my wife, when she was much younger, much significantly younger, would come down and interrupt him on phone calls. And he, because yeah, he's always kind of worked from home. I mean, like long before it was cool, right? Sure. Decades ago. And he turn, he'd turn around and he, he yelled at her one time or a couple times. And, and he, so he told me the story and I mean, the pain in his eyes. And what he said was, this, that, like, I, I regret, I significantly regret that. He's like, I, what, what was she doing wrong? She didn't do anything wrong. And I yelled at her. 
yeah. because I thought it was proper for me to be on a business call and be proper. He's like, that was, not, that was terrible, you know? And so I, I've, I took that and then this pandemic happened and now I'm home all the time and I'm going, you know what? I've got to be grateful for my time with this guy. It's, and it's fun, you know, and we try to make it as fun as we can. And if he's a part of some work calls and he's in on in the background squealing it because he needs something from me while I'm talking to someone that, you know, about something maybe that's important to our business. Nah, it's not, you know, if it, if, if it drives some business away, then that's their problem, not mine. You know, we're, we're a successful business and we'll be just successful without them. You know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I, th I think you're saying it right. It's just like, you got to enjoy that stuff. And yeah, I need some time when I can make some calls without interruption. There, there are certain calls that just I for me, right. Just for some focus. Right. Yep. But other than that, I mean, really, honestly, most people think it's pretty adorable because we're all in that world right now. You know, when your right? kids come up and say hello or give you a yep. hug or, you know, yeah you hear screaming across the hallway. So <laughs> <laughs> don't touch your brother like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quit dragging your sister by the hair. Knock it off. <laughs> no body slamming. Yeah. Until later. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's great, man. Dad wants to get in on that. All right. Knock it yeah, off. Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, well, thanks, man. Hey, last, be last before we go, um, just um, yeah. best way for people to find uh, Break Free Solutions, find Greg. Give us your handle yeah. on social media, your, your website, email, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, t uh, t probably the best way to see you know me and see, see my face is hop on LinkedIn. Um, I, I, I do go on LinkedIn often. I try to be a big presence there, big-ish, not, not like I don't make money off of it, you know, like the big, big um, influencers there, but, um, I think it's like slash Greg Russo 41 or something like that. Um, okay. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you could just email me if you want G Russo at breakfreesolutions.com up on our website, breakfreesolutions.com. I mean, it's just type all that stuff into your browser somewhere. Um, you know, I'm happy to reach out and connect with folks, um, about what we do. It's, it's very specific. It's very unique. We, we typically handle larger clients, but, um, that's not to say we haven't worked with, you know, 50 employee companies that need some help with some of the platforms and solutions that we deliver. So, yeah. Anyway, or, you know, if you just want to reach out and just say hi, get connected, expand networks, talk about what you do. I'll talk about what I do, share some stories. I'm, I, hopefully people know me as really good at that, too, for, for no reason other than just I like people and, and I'm happy to help. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it.